Are you a woman searching for purpose and success? A housewife? Maybe a single mother? You're in the right place. Welcome to Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles. Activate, motivate, inspire. Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome to the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. I am Miss Lisa Noble, your hostess, and I am so excited and elated to have you joining with me today. Speaking of today, our topic consists of becoming a strong leader, and I'm very excited for you to hear the details of this subject. I have a very important guest joining me for this special empowerment segment at the Savvy Speaks Roundtable. This segment is dedicated in sharing keys of, for becoming a strong leader and what that role really looks like. So this is an opportunity, especially for you entrepreneurs out there, you business-minded uh, people. If you want to know, or even in management, whatever leadership role, if you want to know how to increase or refine or redefine or just engage more in your role, this is the episode for you, family. So we're going to give a warm welcome to our guest, Queen Miss Ginger London, London, who is a well-respected preacher, teacher, author, Christian counselor, speaker, and national board certified life and business coach. She is the owner of Ginger London Ministries, gingerlondon.com, Diamond Coach Training and Certification Academy, and Gender, Ginger London Enterprises in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Ginger mentors and coaches individuals, entrepreneurs, and ministries who have a desire and goal to do greater works in the marketplace according to their core values and beliefs. So today, family, we're giving a warm welcome to Ginger. Welcome to the Seven Speaks Roundtable. Family, again, our focus is becoming a strong leader. So Ginger, welcome, Queen, and tell us a little bit more about yourself. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me, Lisa. I am blessed and honored to be here. Truly, it is a humbling experience to just hear your uh, yes. vibrating, exciting voice yes. describe uh, me. So I'm excited. I'm very, very humble. And again, I am Minister Ginger London of GingerLondon.com and Ginger London Ministries. I um, uh, re- reside in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And my, my calling in life is to help people discover their purpose, not just discover it, mm-hmm. but develop it and then deliver it. Uh, into their greatest potential. And um, so I'm excited. I'm, you know, I'm just, I've been gifted by God uh, with the teaching gift, the preaching gift. I've also been gifted by God with the, um, in the area of helps ministry. I can counsel people, coach people, just on assignment. And so, you know, my prayer is that every time someone talks to me, uh, that my words are on assignment and the words that I speak, they are life. And so I'm just excited and just really, really anxious about today. So thank you for having me. I'm so thankful to have you here. And um, again, this has been a, a year long um, development. Yes. I wanted Ginger to come on to my podcast and just us in general develop a, a relationship or a business relationship. So I'm so thankful again to meet another sister from across the uh, our, our great nation. So um, are you ready, family? Then let's talk about it. Becoming a strong leader, family. So Ginger... We're going to start out, um, just going to, of course, you know how this goes, ask you a couple of questions, and then we're going to just develop this lesson so that our on our audience can appreciate the content that you have to share. So can you just tell us a little bit about your journey? And then in, before we get into the meat and potatoes of our discussion, and what, did the, and what was the turning point in your life's journey? So if you could start with what your journey and then tell us the turning point. My my journey, I think, for my life began when I was in my 20s and I was really, I graduated from Southern University, graduated early because I went to college at 16. So when I graduated, I was like around 20 when I graduated. And so most people are like 21 or 22 when they graduated. And so I graduated, I majored in accounting. That's the field that everybody was doing. And so, you know, I was like, okay, that's a popular thing. So I majored in that. So when I graduated, my journey began with me looking for something 
to do. I thought, okay, hey, get your job in accounting. Mm -hmm. I studied for the CPA um, uh, exam. I did all of those things, landed a job, um, mm -hmm. my first job here in Baton Rouge, then moved to New Orleans to work for a CPA firm. And it was there where I really kind of discovered that, you know what, I don't think I really want to do this, mm -hmm. you know. And so... From there, I was, you know, I was going in every day. I was, I was the mom and pop accountant. I was the person that got the people who came in with their receipts in the brown paper bag. Mm -hmm. It was an older couple that owned a corner grocery store, yeah. those kinds of things. Yeah. I was that person. They came and dropped that stuff off to me. And so, you know, I would open it. I would look in it and you're like, okay, you know, but I, I said, oh no, there's got to be something different, something right. better. Right. You know what? I think they just, they figured out, bef you know, or maybe not before me, but they said it before mm -hmm. me. They realized that I wasn't really happy doing that. And so I got fired from that job, mm -hmm. you know? And so then I was like, okay, now what am I going to do now? Mm -hmm. You know? So then I said, okay, well, hmm. Next popular thing was cosmetology. Everybody was doing that. So I went into that. I, I did that. And so um, there, I think is where I really discovered uh, my creativity. You know, so because while I was in cosmetology school, I enjoyed all of that hair stuff and the makeup of and the course. skincare, all of that. But what I really found out when I started doing that was that I like putting on events. I started putting on events for other beauty salon owners or beauty or stylists. And I was bringing in people from Johnson Products, wow. Soft Sheen, and yeah. I was having them to come in and speak to cosmetologists about their product and how they could use their product and how they can purchase the product for them. When I look back over it now is when I really, when I look back over this, like, okay, Ginger, you know what you had that events thing going way back when you know mm -hmm. i would bring i would talk i would negotiate with them have them bring in samples you yeah. know to put in everybody's bag yeah. then i would do um I was doing fashion shows. I would go talk to boutique owners, get them to uh, let us use some of their clothes. I would get the people to come in to be the models. They would go in and get fitted. All those, I would sell tickets. And at that time, $15 to $20 was a lot for a wow. show. And I would sell those tickets and sell out. The people would be packed out and would come to the, come to the show. You wow. know, and I was like, I, now my brother, my youngest brother tells me, if you had kept doing that, mm -hmm. you probably would be really big name person with this fashion show stuff that you used to do. Yeah. So you look back over your life and you start putting those pieces together. Right. So I did that, started, then I finished cosmetology school, got out, started working for um, a hair salon. You remember those uh, hair salon where you can go and get your hair cut for $7? Oh, a still have seven. Yeah, yeah, all those kind of things. So I started doing that. But I still felt like my creativity was stifled and, you know, I, you know, again, got fired from a job because I was like, got to be more to it than this, you wow. know. And so it wasn't until I, then I, from there, I went back to accounting uh -huh. and it was I was working at a Votech school in Chalmette, New, uh, Louisiana, outside of New Orleans. And it was a, a, a Christian sister there would come by my office and she would pass by the door and she would say, God wants to do something great with your life. I had never heard anybody speak to me like that. So right. I thought she was being polite. I was just smiling. I was just saying, okay, thanks. You know, mm -hmm. we were closing out that year, going into the uh, Christmas holidays. She came to the room on purpose and said, Ginger, do not let this old year go out and the new year come in and you have not rededicated your life to Christ to find out what God wants to do with your life. Mm -hmm. I still had never had anybody speak to me like that. So I said, okay, right. Which just so happened. New year's fell on a Sunday. Mm -hmm. I went to Bishop Paul Morton's church in new Orleans. It was right down the street from my apartment. The way he seen. <laughs> uh -huh. Went to his church and I did that because he was so close right down the street. Mm -hmm. He got to the end of his message. He, uh, the doors of the church were open, literally said these words, mm -hmm. do not let the old year go out mm -hmm. and the new year come in. Mm -hmm. And you have not rededicated your life to Christ to find out what God wants to do with your life. Mm -hmm. What can you do with that? Those are our exact yeah. words. Mm -hmm. Girl, and you know, you know what I did? This is mm -hmm. how goofy I am. I leaned in my chair and I looked down the aisle because the aisle looked like it was so long. I was mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I got to walk all the way down there. But I did. I got up and I walked down that aisle, mm -hmm. sat in that chair. And I kid you not, when I sat in that chair, I looked up and it was an, um, 
an elder of the church. That was a glow all over her face. And she looked at me and moved her lips and say, it's you. Mm -hmm. You're the one. Girl, and from there, I got actively involved in the church and started praying and seeking God, finding out what it is I was supposed to do, went on a seven-day fast, Mm -hmm. everything, and then discovered that the gift I had was teaching and preaching, and the the other gift I had was compassion for people. I wanted to see people fulfill Mm -hmm. their walk. So I went to Oral Roberts University Graduate School of Theology. Mm -hmm. After that, Mm -hmm. when I came back, I came back, instead of going back to New Orleans, um, well, when I was at ORU, I knew something was special mm-hmm. and I still couldn't put my finger on it. But one of my, prof- I, no, what I used to do, I used to pull back. I used to withdraw because mm-hmm. I would be in class and I would talk and I could look at the people's faces. And, I, you know, you, you had that feeling you say, oh, God, they probably think I'm a miss know it all, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. or wonder where it came from. And so I started pulling back mm-hmm. and I thought and I stopped, I wouldn't say a lot in class. Mm-hmm. And finally, one of my professors became angry and slammed his, his um, hands on the desk. He said, Ginger, you rob the body of Christ when you don't share your gift of wisdom. Mm-hmm. When you don't talk in this class, you rob us. Mm-hmm. And girl, what can you do? And what so... I knew, I just knew. I graduated Christian Education Student of the Year. I mean, you had awards from all over the country that I didn't even know existed. You know, so I came back home. And again, I started trying. So I came back home like, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Started getting discouraged. Was sitting on the edge of the bed like, God, I got to be more to it than this. Mm -hmm. When I was sitting on the edge of the bed, got a phone call. And it was a friend of mine who said, there's a publishing company in uh, Atlanta doing the very first Afri- uh, study Bible for African-American women, and they need writers. Wow. And she wow. said, give this lady a call. Mm-hmm. I called the lady, started talking back and forth with her. She had, she had um, subject matters and profiles that nobody wouldn't write on. I said, fax it over. Right. I submitted, right. bags it over. Backs I submitted over. 17 articles and profiles. And out of the 17, 13 was chosen. Come on, girl. It was called the Women of Color Study Bible. And if it's still on the market, it's now, the name have been, has been changed to um, Arrive, I mean, Aspire, Women of Color Study Bible. It's the first and only study Bible on the market for African-American women. It talks about their struggles, their successes, wow. its profiles, uh, Black women uh, in the scriptures. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was a blessing. Of and course. I knew that I had something special when the lady who was put was the editor and pulling everything together was supposed to put on a big women of color conference. Mm -hmm. She decided she didn't want to do it. It was going to happen in Dallas. I called the publisher and said, no, we could do it in Baton Rouge. Oh, wow. And I held the first big conference. It was called the women of color conference Mm -hmm. held that first conference for three days, packed house every night. Mm-hmm. And again, I mean, you know, I, I knew, I knew then. And so I've really been trying to push myself over the years to stay in line. So I've been doing conferences and workshops and, you know, speaking at national events, you know, and then for some reason, now that was a turning point. And then another turning point came. Mm-hmm. And I think that last turning point point or the second one was I fell into that I'm bored syndrome again Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like what am I going to do got to be something else okay come on now Mm -hmm. so I've got to pick up you know what I did what I didn't realize at the time was that I was waiting even though I had done all this other stuff myself I was waiting on a particular leader right open doors for me and the person never did it said they would but never did it Mm-hmm. And I let years pass and, and was frustrated and feeling drained and tired, you know, calling and, you know, okay, did you do it? Did you do it? And finally, one of my friends in ministry said, when are you going to stop depending on something that's not happening and do it yourself? You don't need anybody else to do this for you. You can do create your own door. Because I, I, I love that. I love that. We, especially when you say you can create your own door, because I think a lot of us, we we kind of shy away from creating or doing what we need to do because um, we'll turn around. You just have to stay, stay faithful to that. So going into that real quickly, can you in one minute 
tell me a little bit about um, what type of repositioning occurred in your life to get you where you are today. Uh, the the um, the repositioning that occurred it was it was um, it was spiritual and it was emotional. Right. I had to come to a place where I let go of waiting for others to open the door and actually then believe in myself. Not that I didn't believe in myself, but right. I had to raise my confidence level yes. to a, my confidence to a whole nother level. Right. It was like, okay, you know what? You don't really need that person to do, do that for you because you have proven over and over again that you have it within you, what you need, what you need to do now is speak up and let people know what you can do. And you do that by creating your own door, if you will, you know, right. being led by the Holy spirit. And so that I had to reposition my mind by uh, uh, forcing my mind to not wait, forcing my mind to now think mm -hmm. and become creative. I love that. So yeah. in, even in that, you said that you had to raise your confidence. Do you find that for a lot of us, when we're not really paying attention to what's going around on with us in life and we're pursuing our passions, but yet we're still not getting to where we need to be. Do you think it's because we do lack confidence? I, um, and for some people, yes, and for other okay. people, no. Yeah. Okay? okay, but some people, yes, they lack that. They have a confidence to a certain point, mm -hmm. and then they don't believe because they don't they don't see um, the greater works. Right. So they stay where they know what works good, but they don't right. see greater. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you have the people who is not a lack of confidence. It was uh, misdirected energies like mine. Mm -hmm. Okay, mine was misdirected energy. I was waiting on somebody else to yeah. open that door because I felt like if he opened that door, I wouldn't have to work quite as hard, or at least I would be on a platform that would put me in front of a lot of hard work. You know, right. that I'm, you know, especially when somebody says, hey, I'll make one phone call and you can get 10 engagements in a, in a short period of time. Well, make the call, you right. know. So, but so now, you know, if, um, some people, it's not a lack of confidence. It's just misdirected energies. I put all of my energy in waiting on that when I should have put my energy on creating what I'm supposed to be doing, right. you know, uh, doing that. And especially when I saw that I was doing it and it was working. So okay. I should have never stopped. Right. Right. I love that. So let's kind of shift gears a little bit because mm -hmm. as you can tell, leaders can, they come in all shapes. Forms and yes. Styles. It doesn't matter if you're a, if you're a homemaker or if you're the big, you're a business mogul, you're still a leader. So it doesn't matter. So how is leadership defined today? Uh, it's so it's defined in so many different ways today, right. especially depending on what profession you're in, mm -hmm. or what genre of leadership that you that the person may fall in or may be interested in. But overall, if even in all of those different categories, you'll find some uh, uh, comparable um, general principles. And one of them that I found over the years is that leadership um, is influential power, in directing. That. Mm -hmm. guiding and coaching people to accomplish a particular thing. Right. I love that. Do you find that a lot of la leaders lack that info? That, um, yes, because they don't, but yeah, mm -hmm. a lot of leaders or people that get put in leadership positions uh -huh. still want to, uh, what maybe either micromanage, like almost like a dictator uh -huh. kind uh -huh. of thing. They're like all over just on top of people. Then you have the other leader mm -hmm. who's so lax a day. They don't, they don't really get in. They don't put, get hands on. They get other people involved and they just want the report to come to them. Right. You know? But the leader that uh, makes a major difference in somebody's life that's following him or her is the influent, the one that has influential power. Right. See, because you can become, you can be um, the micromanager, uh -huh. right? And you micromanage me. Well, right. the only thing that you're going to influence me to do is become robotic. Come I'm going to do whatever you say. Right. I mm -hmm. want my check. Mm -hmm. no period. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, hey, if you say lay it out this way, I'm going to lay it out that way. Right. Am I going to, I'm, I'm going to respect you. I'm going to see you as a leader, mm -hmm. but will you have any influence in my life? No, you'll be directive. That. That's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going, I'm not coming to you for anything. I'm just going to say what I need to do today. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Then the other one who is a little distant from the, 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 uh, pers the followers, you know, I know you're the leader, but the only person that I really have contact with is your assistant. Mm 
somebody who you assign to come check on us, that kind of thing. The one that has influential power is the one that can envelop within their leadership skill and style uh, several components that will draw people to them mm -hmm. so that he, he or she can influence them to uh, accomplish a particular thing. You're influential when you actually make a difference in my life, even as an employee. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love that. I think a lot of leaders lack in that area because it, it, the the top thing is what you were saying about the micromanaging, but then what you what where the passion comes in is when you can make a difference. And I think you hit the nail right on the head. That 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 is phenomenal. That point by itself can stand alone because I think as leaders we we try to maneuver to get the job done, which is that's what we're getting paid for. But at the same time, if you're not making a difference in your employee's life, how are we changing the world? How are we impacting? The business for longevity you know what i mean exactly so, so in essence that leads me right into our next segment what are what are some of the top laws of leadership okay when you look at leadership then again there's a lot of different uh laws and you'll see all you know similar topics you know along the thing but there are some laws that must be in place no matter who you are it doesn't matter what your personality right. is right. Right. doesn't matter you know um uh, what type of leader you are, who you who you are leading, you know, a team, or one person, 15 people, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go over a couple of them that I've found to be very important in the life of a leader. And the first one is you have to build trust. And yeah. this is where your character and the leader's word is in play. If as a character, as a leader, if you if you don't have good character, respectable character, you're not going to influence anybody to do anything. If you don't stand by your word, if you say one thing and then do something different, mm -hmm. people will begin to lose respect for you. Mm -hmm. So you have to build trust. You have to you have to know uh, what you're committed to, and you have to become committed to those things. Mm -hmm. You have to be honest at all times. You know, yeah. you got to tell the truth at all times. You know, sometimes yeah. telling the truth might be a little difficult for you, but it's an automatic strategy in building trust. Yeah. You know, even if you have to, even if it's hard to say it, you know, you know what? I cannot let you take off, you know, this coming weekend because we got a project that has to get done. Yeah. You know, let's pull together. Let's get the project done. And then let's look at the calendar and see if there's another time that I could go ahead and approve for you. But we have to get this project done. Right. You know, listen, you haven't been performing at your best. I've asked mm -hmm. you to complete three tasks. You've only done one. Sometimes it's hard to have those conversations. Right. You know what? If you're an entrepreneur and you got some, you know, like a small staff or one or two people, even family members helping you in it, they're messing up everything. So you got to step in there and tell the truth. Listen, I appreciate you helping me. But right now, you are hurting me more than you're helping me because I give you an assignment to do and because you're a relative, you decide that you could do it whenever you want to. Mm -hmm. and not when I need it done. So right. either we need to redefine this relationship or I'm just going to have to tell you that I appreciate you, appreciate you praying for me, but you can't work for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so you have to find, you have to tell the truth at all the times. And the mm -hmm. one thing that I think in building that trust Mm -hmm. um, is you have to be a secret keeper. You have to be able to talk to people confidentially mm -hmm. and never tell their stories. You know what, Ginger? I'm going to have to stop you right there because I think that that's so prevalent. And I think that that's so, in this world today, we have forgotten the sanctity of privacy. Yes. We forgotten, and we have forgotten and neglected the sanctity of humanity. And I think that's why a lot of our businesses, even our churches, and just relationships in general, I think that it, that is exactly why we're failing. And we're gonna if we're not careful, we're gonna fail our future leaders because we can't get it together. Exactly. Exactly. There I mean that's just a part of being a great leader. You know, mm -hmm. when you're influential, people are gonna be drawn to you. Mm -hmm. They're going to wanna confide in you. They're mm -hmm. gonna wanna tell you things. Mm -hmm. You know, it could be about the business, it could be about the employment, it could be about their personal lives. But when they do that, they don't wanna hear it again. Because the minute they hear it again, you can forget it. All trust goes mm -hmm. out of the window. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will not get them to confide anything in you again, ever. They might work there, but they will never confide in you. Mm -hmm. It will take a lot of rebuilding. Mm 
a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I agree. agree. No, I agree 1000%. I think there's not enough discussions on leadership and how to be an effective leader. I think a lot of us, we are self-taught or we're just, we've been, we've been pawned through the ranks that yeah. we didn't learn the key intricate um, uh, measurements of what it takes to be a great leader. And great leadership is not always surface. We think that it's all numbers and it is numbers. That is true. The business have to make money. But in order for the business to make money, the people have to know how to do that. And a great leadership is exactly what you just said you're going to be able to initiate those goals or infuse those goals into that employee and they will be able to to initiate what you need done in the business so do you find that a lot of leaders we neglect or we fail or they even that a lot of businesses fail because of lack of good leadership oh absolutely i think especially when business uh business and even in some of what uh is known as parachurch uh ministries as ministries that are not churches people could have itinerary ministry they could have workshop ministries you know mm -hmm. ministries other than just a, a church it uh there's a uh sometimes they don't evolve uh and businesses don't evolve the way they should because people think okay i'm heading it up that's it and they never either partner with somebody and get mentored to be a leader or in make an investment in their leadership you know so especially nowadays with with technology you can watch an online webinar you can take a a, a course a, a, you can get a certificate in it you have many ways that you can learn about how to be a great leader because nobody just knows how to do that but when you don't invest in yourself and do what you need to do to begin to develop these skills and qualities of a great to become a great leader then you're gonna fail mm -hmm. and then when you fail what's gonna happen you're not gonna say you know I wasn't a great leader Mm -hmm. Oh no, the people weren't ready for me. They mm -hmm. weren't ready for what mm -hmm. I had. We're mm -hmm. gonna make a, mm -hmm. make all kind of excuses mm -hmm. instead of saying, you know what? I didn't prepare myself to, to lead this. I didn't prepare myself to be the owner of the business. I didn't prepare mm -hmm. myself to be um, the uh, itiner the traveling itinerary minister minister. I didn't prepare myself to be the leader of this thing that I wanted to do, to launch and do. Mm -hmm. and so when it doesn't work out the way I want it to work out, then all of a sudden I, I create a reason and then I say that it's the people mm. you know or oh, they wouldn't buy from me I couldn't get the people to buy you know they buy from everybody else I sell the same purses I sell the same jewelry right. but for some reason they wouldn't buy from me well they didn't buy from you because you weren't leading it correctly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right and leading is anything let's talk just let's go retail leading is anything you're an entrepreneur you got a retail store storefront and you're selling something leading is presenting so how do you present your merchandise? How do you greet the customer when they come through the door? When they call and ask you a question, if they ask you, can you get a custom order for them? Can you, mm -hmm. do you take orders? You know, how, all of that is leading. Right. So tell me, so tell me, because this is a great conversation. So tell me, what are some characteristics of great leadership for the people who, who are, who, who are trying to, um, you know, just soak in everything that you're saying, but they don't quite understand Okay. But it takes to be a great leader. So tell me what are some of the... The number one thing, I think, to be a great leader mm -hmm. or to evolve into a great leader is the, the person has to be a learner. Okay. You mm -hmm. have to commit yourself to life, life being a lifelong learner. Don't ever become so grand, so uh, arrogant, um, or grandiose that you feel that you've learned everything about leadership and that you have no room for growth. Mm -hmm. If you see yourself as a lifelong learner, now you're not minimizing what you do know, all right? Because being a great leader is never, you know, well, I'm still learning. You know, we, we nobody's perfect. That's not a great leader. You know, a great leader is someone who is confident in what they do know, and they're realistic about there's more to learn. Mm -hmm. So first characteristic is to be a learner, to be constantly learning new and inventive ways of doing things, invent new ways of leading you know, innovative ways of a leader. We, we've seen that in leadership over the years. Because if you go back just 20 years ago, uh, companies who specialized in leadership, you know, they were doing those retreats, those leadership retreats. And then in those leadership retreats, they had those little exercises where you fall back, you know, and let somebody catch you. You know, you fold your arms and you fall back and you got to trust that the person behind you is going to catch you, all those kinds of things, you know. So 
you know, so now companies know that you have to learn different ways about leading. You have to build your confidence level mm -hmm. as a leader. The second characteristics is of a great leader is you have to be someone who can create momentum. Oh, right? I love that. You, have to, you have to create momentum. You have to be able to dynamically move people forward all the time. It has to be consistent. As a great leader, your momentum should never drop because if your momentum level drops or if your momentum uh, drops, then guess what? The people around you are going to know that you're not excited about leading anymore, that you're not um, uh, you, your creativity is out the window. So guess what they're going to do? They're going to go out the window with you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's just the bottom line. If you've ever worked around somebody who uh, they weren't encouraging, they weren't enthusiastic, they did not motivate the, uh, the, uh, the team members or the staff, it makes a difference. So you ha one, the second characteristic is you got to create momentum. And then the one I love the most is, number three, you got to be have impeccable ethics and morals yeah. as a leader. Mm -hmm. No ifs, no ands, no buts. You have mm -hmm. to respect other people's rights and dignities, mm -hmm. dignity, and you have to have a moral compass within yourself. Period. Oh, oh, you know something? I was just talk talking to someone about moral compass. So let's kind of stay right here for one mm -hmm. second, briefly, like one minute. Explain to people what a moral compass is. A moral compass is is those core values and beliefs mm -hmm. that divide the directions of your life. Mm -hmm. All right. So that compass is going to let you know, go left, go right. No, stay in the middle. Don't do anything. Don't say anything. Yes, speak up. No, you know, that moral compass is going to, you, you can only have that compass. The, well, let's say this. The compass will guide and direct you based on whatever your core values and beliefs are. So in order for to create that compass, comp the right compass, you have to have the right core beliefs. You have to have the right values in place. And when you do, that compass is going to let you know when you're a little bit off, when you're headed in the wrong direction, when you said something that you shouldn't have said, that, that moral compass is going to direct you back to make an, apolo an apology or you know, acknowledging that you were wrong and how you handled the situation as a leader. Uh, that moral compass is going to let you know when you are crossing the line with a worker or, you know, whether it's an employee or a coworker or an associate, you know what I'm saying? You're going to cross that line. You know that you're not supposed to have a romantic relationship on the job. So that moral compass is going to keep, it's going to, it's going to make, that moral compass will make whatever wall needs to come up to block fiery darts, that moral compass is going to make that wall come up. So, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be the guiding element of your life as a leader and how you conduct yourself as a leader and how you engage with the people that you're leading or companies that you have to deal with. I love that. I like that. I like that because I think a lot of people don't understand that we are guided by our internal beliefs, values, and attitudes. Yes. And so therefore, we, we're not understanding that that dictates a lot of our decisions. And if our decisions are covered with our past experiences, sometimes we're not able, even as leaders, to make the appropriate, the appropriate type of decision that's befitting for the group holistically or for their subordinates or for their employees, which is basically what you're saying is why I think a lot of leaders, we don't, um, we, we violate our employees, if you will, by like yeah. saying, not giving them the trust or we're sharing their, in, their information inappropriately or we're being dysfunctional, mm -hmm. but yet we're calling it leadership. That's great. So what are the seven traits of, which is great way to this next segment, what are the seven traits of a great leadership? Uh, the seven traits of a great leader, um, the first one is, you know, just having a really, really um, good uh, results as a leader. That, that's number one. That's a really great trait. And you, the way that you have good results or great results as a leader is, you know, you have to believe in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to see the bigger picture. You know, it's not just what's going on today. You have to see what's supposed to have occurred at the, by Friday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got to see the bigger picture. So today is just a step that gets you to Friday. So you have to be um, a leader that can actually, you know, get to the results. 
you know what, do I panic because the day didn't go, the day is Monday and it didn't go like I planned it and we got this project that has to be finished by Friday. So do I go into a hysterical fit? Do I go through fits of rages? Do I slam stuff against the wall? Or do, can I, can I get you to the results? Can I control all of those emotions and say, you know what, we didn't have a good day Monday. Here's what we need to do to, uh, tomorrow. Or, or if it's Tuesday, Here's what we need to do today. And if we follow this, these steps today, Monday will be included in today and we'll be right on track. See, you got to you got to be able as a leader to get to not wear your emotions on your sleeve because the leader always sees the big picture and they see the end result. Mm -hmm. But sometimes leaders don't have enough patience to understand that, you know what, these are the goals, but they might not all fall in place systematically just like this there might come there might be a little challenge in there somewhere or something may have to be tweaked in order for it to line up with to reach the end results mm -hmm. so you have to be able to see the end um the end results i also a good leader has uh, another trait is that um they have to have a broad knowledge yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So it's not wise for you just to know, you know, me, myself and I knowledge, you know, mm -hmm. just what I need to know to lead right here. That goes back to being a lifelong learner. You have to know a little something about every area that you're leading. All right. Because if you don't, what's happening, let's say you, you're in a, in, a, in a corporate business, corporate arena, uh, and you're leading like three or four different departments, if you will. You need to know a little something about each one of those areas, because if you don't and somebody comes to you and ask a question and you are they consistently come to you, and you never, ever can give them the right answer. Eventually, what they say is, well, he's the leader. She's the leader. And they don't know anything. Mm. I've been in there five times and every time I ask a question, I cannot get an answer. All right. doesn't mean that you have to know all information, but you need to have a broader knowledge than just knowing what you need to do at one spot. So you have to know you have to have some knowledge about that. And here's the one that I really like as well. You have to have a good understanding of people. I what makes people mm -hmm. do what they do? What mm -hmm. makes them tick the way they tick? Mm -hmm. Think the way they think. Do mm -hmm. you have to major in psychology? No, but you better get some basic understanding mm -hmm. about people. Mm -hmm. You better know that if a person gets frustrated enough, they'll walk clean out that door and tell you I'll do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, because, I mean but that's, sometimes that's even warranted, you know? I mean, yeah. you can't just walk <laughs> off your job, but at the same time, if you, you know, have so much, you, no, I, I agree yeah. with that's a percent so So, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, so the, the leader has to understand people. Okay, so instead of me saying, oh, she walked, like you said, oh, she walked out the job. No, she didn't walk off the job. She walked away from the stress of it. You better come on. Yeah, she walked away from the stress of it. So I need to understand as a leader, I need to go back and look into that situation or understand, you know what? There are different triggers for stress in people. What triggered her? Was it something I said? Was it something I kept dwelling on? Was she was she not getting the help that she needed from the co -work, our coworkers? What or you know what triggered that level of stress to the point that she felt like she had to walk away? You know, mm -hmm. in that frame of mind. Okay, and, so I have a question for you, Ginger. Mm -hmm. well, and, and I and forgive me for cutting you off, but I, I don't want to forget because what you're saying right here. Do you think that? Some leaders do not take responsibility for their actions. Oh. Yeah, and that was one of the other things. They okay. tra uh, take responsibility. Yeah, absolutely. I think that what 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 the position of leadership does of mm -hmm. uh, in leadership sometimes it can um, be um, a wall or a protective shield around a person who doesn't want to develop. Mm -hmm. All right. So if I'm in a leadership position and I don't want to be developed into an influential leader, what I'll do is I'll stand in the position and I'll be authoritative and I'll be uh, uh, like a dictator kind of thing. And what I say is what I say, go and that's it. Mm -hmm. So instead of me um, taking responsibility, I remind you who the leader is. Right. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm the supervisor. Mm-hmm. You don't tell me what to do. I tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. I'm the leader. I'm the department leader. I'm the CEO. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. but when a leader mm-hmm. takes responsibility, they don't just take responsibility for the things that they've done wrong. They also take the praise for what has done been done correctly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Mm-hmm. So if the leader has a great team and somebody says, uh, thank John and for for leading such a great and awesome team. You did a great job in leading through this project. Yay. Mm-hmm. You know, but also when the, the when John's boss over him calls and say, you know what, some the ball dropped somewhere. So I'm going to have to hold you responsible because you're leading the team. Oh, he can't. Well, no, no, no. Well, you know what? I told him what to do, but they didn't do it. No, a great leader takes responsibility. You have you're absolutely right. And maybe I didn't see where the ball was dropping. I need to be more attentive next time, you know. Whatever the case may be, some leaders don't want to take responsibility, but they like to they like to stand in the position of a leader. Yeah. You know, they like the authority that comes with it. They like the um, the dictatorship, if you will, that comes with it, where they can boss people around mm-hmm. and not be questioned. But guess what? Let me tell you something, Lisa. This is mm-hmm. a different day. It's a different day. It's a different day, especially with this young generation right here. This is a different day. The millennials will they might say anything. You can be in a leadership position. Stress them out and see what happens. Hmm. They will tell you. <laughs> they literally sure will. will. They come back. <laughs> yeah, they'll come back to work. Like nothing happens. <laughs> so, <laughs> what, so how important is, is a stronger, reliable inner circle in leadership? Because we've talked a lot about, you know, characteristics and traits and what it takes to be a leader and identifying, you know, what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. Exactly. But sometimes we need that good support system. So how important is it? To have a stronger, reliable inner circle when it comes to every leadership. every leader needs an mm-hmm. inner circle. Right. But if mm-hmm. but if you are a leader who is aspiring to be a great leader, mm-hmm. you need it's 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 it, you have to have it. You need that inner circle, and that inner circle is going to be uh, a a group of very close friends or colleagues that support you as a leader. They're going to have a special set of skills and talents that they're going to bring to that inner circle friendship. You know, they're going to be people who have achieved a certain level of success. It's not just it's not it's not it's not bubbling them down the street. No, these are unique people. These are different. Br- a level of people, you know, that inner circle, you know, just like in the Bible, the, the tabernacle, you got the outer courts where everybody can stand, but then you got the inner, the inner courts where only certain people could come into. All right. So that's what it is. The inner circle is that selective group of people, uh, friends, colleagues, mm-hmm. associates that only can enter into a particular area of your life and in this case the life of the leader you know what your leadership life if you will you know to be able to speak to your character speak to your more compass speak to your skill set you know speak to how uh to to how and if you have become influential yet or what you need to do to to manage your influential power so that you can be a great leader these are the people that have wisdom and knowledge so if somebody is a leader since we've been talking about leadership across the board so if you're a leader let's say uh in spiritually then you need your core group to be people who are spiritually strong if you are a leader in business your inner circle needs to be other strong business leaders who can speak into your life and teach you what you need to to know to be able to lead your business for growth and success Mm -hmm. you know if you're on the job in corporate america then your inner circle needs to be other people who are in corporate america uh whether they're in the same uh, genre of profession or in different professions, but they need to be in corporate America and they need to be successful at what they're doing. Not bitter, not angry, not frustrated, not, you know, disappointed. No, they need mm-hmm. to be successful. So it's important because it's that inner circle mm-hmm. group. Is that group is that, that's the group that builds the leader mm. that brings yeah. something to the table. I love that. So let's kind of elaborate just real quickly. Mm -hmm. The group that brings, that builds leader and brings something to the table. How important is that that we have those type of people surrounding us? I think it's very important because though, again, the inner circle, Mm -hmm. that's that private group. They're Mm -hmm. not coming to your job or to your business. You guys are 
you guys are going to meet somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You're going to meet at the restaurant, you know, in the back room where you say, is anybody sitting back here? You know, or you're going to meet at somebody's house for dinner where there's a, you know, a dinner, you know, uh, it's going to be on purpose. Those meetings are on purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're intentional. And so mm -hmm. it's at those meetings where as a leader, you become naked and um, what's the word? transparent. Yes. yes. You become naked and transparent and unashamed. You know, listen, hey, I messed up. I was supposed to do it. I was leading a project. Uh, I started off great, and then I dropped the ball right here. So this is what I did. Can anybody tell me? Because I know I'm probably going to have this similar project again, or what can I do to improve? And these are the people that are not judgmental. They're judging the situation, meaning that they're looking at it. They're taking a microscopic look at what you just said, mm -hmm. and now let's go in here and dive through these pieces mm -hmm. and see what we need to do so that this won't repeat itself, but now you become empowered with what you need to know to make, to make the next project even better. So this is the, this, that private conversation. This is where that person lays everything out and just becomes open. Even, let, let me tell you, this is the challenge that in your inner circle, we were talking about that moral compass, the inner, here's what the inner circle will do. If you mess up on your job and step outside mm -hmm. of that moral compass and mm -hmm. you become engaged mm -hmm. with a coworker and you know you shouldn't have done that, mm -hmm. right? Here is where you can come to that inner circle. And most people don't do this. Come to the inner circle and confess that. Right. And they say, now help me come out of this. What mm -hmm. steps do I need to take to come out? Because, you know, I'm in a leadership position. So I got to watch myself because I don't want to come across as sexual harassment. How do right. I step out of this? I love you. Mm -hmm. Professionally and legally, how do I make the transition where this relationship has ended peacefully? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you start sharing everything, then there are wisdom. That's wisdom at the table. And then they're going to start talking to you about how to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The challenge is to follow the wisdom and not the fear. Mm -hmm. It's one person. And of course, they are a celebrity that I really and I, I don't I, I probably would never speak to this person, you know, of course, in life. But and, and um, he's a rapper. And his name is Slim Thug. But I follow his personal page as well as his business page. And one of the things that I really love about his business that he has, um, he, he has apparel, is his camaraderie. Everything that you described, instantly I thought of him. Everything as far as having an inner circle, a support system, and all of those facets of leadership is evident in his business because it's sustainable, it's viable, it's prosperous. He's always productive. And and like you're saying that they need, you know, he might share every now and then how they meet, you know, privately or, you know, or they have uh, brunches or whatever. But I just think even before you said them, I was like, golly, I really admire, you know, this particular person. And, and it's not just because he's the leader, it's because they're all the leader. How important is that, Ginger? You know, because you, if you're in a circle where everybody is pretty much equal, how is it? How, how do you define, or how important is it to let everyone be in their role so that the, the, the so the biz the business can benefit? And it's not a pride or ego. It's, it's right. more about, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. Explain but, just a little about that. Yeah. Remember I said earlier that mm -hmm. your inner circle, when you, when, when you select these people, everybody's coming with a set of skills and talent. Right. Come on. Mm -hmm. Everybody got to come bring something to the table. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody got to bring something to the table. Mm -hmm. And so remember when they're your inner circle, it's not just your inner circle. It's also their inner circle. Right. Mm -hmm. You might be on the block today, but somebody else going to be on the block tomorrow. Come on. Mm -hmm. All right. Or the next week. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. and that's not just a, a bad thing. In my block might be a day of success. I'm talking to you about how I made, how I pull this off. You know what I'm saying? Somebody else's turn might be tomorrow. So just like they've spoken into my life with their skills, their knowledge, their talents, then my turn comes around where I can speak into this person's life, skills, and talents. Mm -hmm. But in your in your inner circle should be people who come to the table with their own set of skills and talents, because when that happens, mm -hmm. the inner circle now has value. Come on. So it's none of this. Uh, you ain't got. You ain't bringing nothing to it. No, everybody bringing something to the table. Right. So it's no little me's and big eyes. Yeah. Everybody brings something to the table. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. And so when you do that, then a level of respect is created. So remember, when you when you first pull this together, it needs to be defined. We, I want this to be an inner circle. You got to say what the relationship is. Mm-hmm. You got to define the relationship so everybody can be on the same page. Mm-hmm. If somebody that you invited to be a part of the inner circle doesn't want to do that or feels like that's going to be too much, no hard feelings. You got to find right. somebody to fill the spot. Mm-hmm. But first, when you bring the group together, you have to define what that relationship is going to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. I want this to be an inner circle group. Right. And here's what I want to see happen in this group. And everybody has to be mutually in agreement with it. Period. Right. Yeah. And if they're not in agreement with it, they can't be a part of the inner circle. Right. You know, right. you have to, everybody has to be in agreement with it. The word of God says, speak the truth in love. So, you know, there are going to be, there will be some times where we have to deal with some issues or help somebody through something. We have to speak the truth in love. And you have to agree that whenever that time comes, that I'm open to receive. Okay. And not just, hmm? so go ahead. ahead. And that, I, I don't want to forget the question, but go ahead. I, I, I'll write it down. I was going to say not just receive, but I have to also become a doer. Because I don't right. want to waste your time being in my inner circle with you speaking into my life, and I'm not going to do it. And see, that's, and I, I find that that's an issue in some business relationships because of this very thing, what I'm about to say, communication. Do you think, just from what you said made me think about communication, do you think that as leaders that we lack communication, that our, 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 our communication is sometimes vague and superficial? Yes, you know, and... The, that is a really great trait for a good trait for a great leader is communication mm-hmm. and not just community. We all communicate when we open our mouths and talk, no matter what language we speak, we all communicate. What makes a difference with a great leader is that when people, when the, when the leader communicates, the people not only hear the person, they understand what's being said. Come on. Mm-hmm. That's a great communicator. Mm-hmm. We all can use our words. We all talk. One way or the other, whether we sign language or not, it's still communication. What makes me a great leader is when I speak, the people who hear me, are they just hearing me or do they hear and understand? Mm -hmm. That's what influence comes in at. It's when they hear me and understand. And if they don't understand, they're so comfortable with asking me questions that when they ask me the question, I clear it up and guess what? They understand. Okay, so do you think that sometimes when we're giving that we lack in the direction that we're giving for our subordinates, our employees, or even just our business partnerships, and that's where the breakdown of communication is, is that we as leaders, we may have, um, I, I had a leadership president talk about the God complex. So if we think that, hey, this person should know this, I've said this, but then, uh, uh, yes. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? And yeah. then at the end, when they're fired, you're like, well, then you want to tell what you did. You want to go into details, yeah. <laughs> right. But wait a minute. I needed that five months ago. You, now you're telling me, oh, if I would have went to the left, I wouldn't have bumped my head. You know what I mean? So right. do you find that that's an issue? Just real, just one minute. Yeah. That uh, some of our that, yeah, because that, that that is an issue. And I'm going to tell you, um, there's a saying that is used um, in teaching, and not you know, like in spiritual teaching is in the saying is this, you haven't taught if nobody's learned. Come on girl. And what that does is, is put the responsibility on the teacher. So here we're going to say you haven't communicated if they haven't understood. Mm. Mm -hmm. It goes, the responsibility goes back on the one with the words and the one with the words is the communicator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I I have something I want you to do, if I have something I want you to understand, I haven't communicated if you're not getting it. What does that mean? I got to go change my words because maybe right. you don't understand those words. Not that you're dumb or anything. Maybe you're just not accustomed to those words. Mm-hmm. So if I'm saying it and you're not getting it, I need to rephrase it. I need to restructure the sentence, whatever I need to do. But I need to change what I'm saying because when I speak, I need to speak with words that are easily understood. Why? Because I have a result that I want to see accomplished. So I'm not supposed to make the journey complicated. I'm, so make, I'm supposed to influence you and through guidance, coaching, and directives on how to make get to the end result. And I can't get you there if you're confused about what I'm saying. You better say that. I, I think that we undervalue our, oh, I can't think of the word. Um, it, we, we're, not, we're not aware. And we undervalue our employees as far as, 
we think that we're painting a clear picture, but we're not taking the time to actually make sure that they are understanding thoroughly what their job descriptions are, or what we are expecting them to do, or even what the level or standard of operation is for that business, or what, what is expected for that day or for that event or whatever. But yet, we will gladly provide that type of uh, feedback on exit day. And I think that does our employees. Yeah. We lose a lot of good employees. Yes, exactly. Undermine our own, our own alleged good intentions. Right, and then it goes back to mm -hmm. um, what type of leader are they aspiring to be? Because mm -hmm. when you want to be a great leader, you will learn how to do these things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. You will not just lead, you know, by trial and error. It's just, it's that is just way too costly. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You you you're not gonna hit and miss. Uh, mm -hmm. When you decide, you know, as a leader, you're not gonna hit and miss. You're not gonna do it by trial and error. You go. It's gonna be what you say. It's gonna be intentional. May I may I may make some mistakes along the way? Absolutely, because you know from those mistakes, if I go back and I really dissect it, I I could pull a lesson out of there or learn something. Mm -hmm. But if I don't have that learner mentality as a leader, then guess what? I won't have any empathy for people because I'm not even going to try to learn you. But let's say that. Try to get to know you. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to know all your business, but I need to know what you're good at. You, you know. Oh, oh my God! I know. Get, peak audience, please. Because this is some this is some good stuff because I think. We need another podcast, and we're going to have to wrap this up. But listen, okay. what you just said was so significant because a lot of people, and, 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 and you know what, Ginger, let's be honest, in a day-to-day -day business, in a, like Walmart, let's just take that conglomerate, for example, how does a leader have time to get to know each and every <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to see when they're going to have time in the field to put some more cash in so we can, we can check out that. So how, so how can a leader in a fast-paced environment such as that Hey, you know, their employees. Let's be real. Okay, at, at Walmart, they might be doing it at the rally. You ever been there with it? <laughs> I mean, you know, hey, but I mean, if you're being realistic, because you know, but that, also you got to remember, no. you know what? We mm -hmm. see, we see the store when it's open. Right. Okay. Right. So we don't know, and and maybe they do. You know what I'm saying? They may have training out off site. You know what I'm saying? Right, you're right. Or in a private room in one of the buildings somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Or the leader may partner up with uh, one of the associates. You know, hey, listen, I'm going to help you today. I want to see how you're making out on this self checkout thing. If you <laughs> you being nice to the people, right, right, you know, right. or you know, I'm going to stand here at your at your counter and see, you know, how you know how you getting along with the people or if you are um what do they call them um a st server or whatever people who restock a stalker if you put it back on it you know what hey well, i might come and get my hands i might come in and help you one day and while i'm helping you stock then i'm asking hey you from here yeah you know yeah, 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 how, you, how long you've been at walmart you know I, what i'm saying no but i'm just saying you know I, and, I, and i know we're laughing about it which i'm glad we threw that in there because you know we need to have fun when we're doing this, but at the same time, you know, it's like, you know, I don't want it to seem like that we're just, you know, we don't right. the struggles of a leader also, because that's, I think that's a very good outlook to see that, okay, when we're in a fast paced environment, how do we take the time? But it is essential for us, would you say, to take the time to really get to know people? Because I think that that's where a lot of misjudgments come in yeah so exactly thoughts? i think you should a leader should whether you're an entrepreneur on the job whatever it is in ministry whatever it is you need to get to know people you, there's no way you can not get around it because if you don't when something comes up you know what they say hmm. uh he's just cold-hearted he don't even understand real life you must know people got a got a families and uh things they have to do outside of walmart Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't spend my all my time here. I have family. I got children I'm raising. Right. So you start hearing those kind of comments. But when the leader takes time to get to know a person and get to under, especially when they understand people, uh, you know, like I said, you don't need you don't need a, a degree in psychology. Right. But if you have a lot of moms working, then you need to understand. You know what? There's going to be some issues with children one day. You know, daycare right. might call. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And she may have to leave for an hour or two to go pick them up, take them, drop them off at auntie house, then come back to work. Mm 
Mm-hmm. You know, as opposed to going get them and not coming back for the rest of the day. So it has to be some. So when you get to oh, know, man. yeah, when you mm-hmm. get to know people, okay, hey, now I've, I've I've discovered that she's a mom. You know, she got three kids. You know, or I, you know, I'm finding out that you know that uh he's taking care of his elderly dad you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. i know that uh uh jane doe over there she likes bowling or uh he likes playing basketball in his spare time you know what i'm saying and when you do that along with that comes learning about what they're good at because when you have a genuine concern or let me say this not concern but when you have a genuine interest Mm-hmm. in the people that's working for you you will it goes back to your word intentional you mm-hmm. will intentionally get to know them you better say that oh ginger i i hate i hate no that. i know <laughs> i hate that we have to end this this podcast this segment I, I really do i would love to have you back for a part two because i think that this this is a different type of podcast a different type of episode for um our audience and i think that they are going to find a lot of value and appreciate so I'm going to give you your final thoughts and I want you to tell me your final thoughts on, um, um, we're going to kind of deviate from, from what we previously thought I was going to say, but so what is the diamond coaching Academy? And I, I need you to sum that up in about two minutes okay. and, and, and why you, why people would choose your Academy and that'll be your final thoughts for today. Well, the if you the Diamond Coaching Academy is a coach training and certification program, and what we do is we teach people how to coach others. So if you are a leader and you're listening to this, there is something that you have on the inside of you that is teachable to other people, right? Or if you want to learn how to guide people into getting the results that you want, coaching is one of the best things, but one of the best ways that you can you can do that. You know, it comes from the sporting industry. So, you know, the coaches on the sideline coaching, but before they got out there to play the game, he had some conversations with them before they went to play on the field. So we teach you how to have conversations with people that produce results. Yeah. And um, the difference with the Diamond Coaching Academy is that is faith-based, it's Christian-based, it's spirit-led, and we also now have added components that are practical to it. It's always had some practical components, Mm -hmm. but now we're going to actually have these um, learning labs where, you know, because a lot of times if you uh, go through a coach certification, they tell you, hey, by the time you get to the end of our training program, you should have your coaching business up and running. Well, when you go through it, it doesn't always work out that way because you have to also concentrate on how to get certified. So we've incorporated within our program that by the time you get to the end of the nine months, you literally will already be, we're going to help you design your programs. We're going to help you come up with your content. We're going to help you, uh, uh, do your, your your social media posts. You know, it's going to come to a point where you, uh, you will have enough knowledge about coaching and now you're going to have to start doing it. So in order to get certified, you've got to prove that you can do it. And the best way to do that is to go ahead and build that vision right there in the process of being certified. I love that. I love that. So can you please share a social media site where people can reach you for more knowledge about your programs and all? Yeah, if you are, um, if you're on Facebook, you can just... Uh, uh, if you type in Ginger London, you uh, see my picture. If you type in Minister Ginger London, it'll come up. So um, on Facebook, I have the personal page. I have the Ginger London ministry page. And then I also have a group on Facebook called Gotta Get Myself Together mm-hmm. group. So any that. one of those. Yeah. If I, I'm on LinkedIn, I'm on Twitter, you know, uh, also this uh, GingerLondon.com, which is my website. Right. But if it's, if it's out there, uh, you know, I'm. I learned that from T.D. Jakes. He said, if it's out there, I'm on it. So oh, hey, hey. <laughs> I think we all should take that, that, that frame of thinking. You know, if it's out there, I'm on it because people are everywhere. So, you know, everybody's not in one place. They're all over the place. So you can pretty much find me on at least the top five uh, right. social media. And I use my name. You know, I don't come right. up with catchy stuff. I use my name because I want people to find me. So right. it'll be Ginger London. Mm-hmm. Okay, great. I love that. I am elated to have participated in the show today. I know that someone somewhere was touched by this wealth of knowledge. Thank you so much to the queen of the round table, um, Ginger London, owner of Ginger, Ginger London Ministries, GingerLondon.com, Diamond Coach Training and Certification Academy, 
and Ginger London Enterprises in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who you can find out more um, at www.imlisanobles.com slash podcast.html. And as a bonus, please visit www.imlisanobles.com slash resources.html, where you will receive that uh, free podcast um, resources for being a part of the Savvy Speeds podcast family. I love you. I truly do. And thank you for being a part of the show. And remember my mantra, and as I always say, you are, you are a unique combination of experiences, clothed in purpose, strength, and destiny. Have a great week, and I'll see you right here next time on the Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast with Ms. Lisa Nobles. Online at imlisanobles.com and on Facebook and Instagram at EWOFP. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review. And we'll catch you next time on Savvy Speaks Empowerment Podcast. Activate, motivate, inspire.